Hello everybody. I am going to review the syllabus for Social Work 206, uh, the influences of sexual factors and on behavior. I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of the syllabus for the course. As you can see, uh, I am located in the Charleston area. I am Dr. Ronald Dickerson, and there's my contact number. As you look a little below that, you can see the same information with my office hours. I recommend, since this is an online course, that you reach out if you have any questions to me by calling me at area code 843-345-2224. Uh, if you feel that you cannot call, then I recommend that you email me. However, please uh, be mindful that when you email me, uh, that you be brief in your questions, uh, very thorough with your questions, so that I can give you an accurate response. Therefore, you know, I truly recommend that you reach out to me by my cell. You can call me at any time. Just leave me a message, and I will return your call. As we look over the syllabus, you'll see that the textbook for the course is listed under uh, number one, required text. As we move further down to the second section, where we talk about the course learning objectives. And these are the requirements in which you must achieve uh, for this course to ensure that you have successfully completed this course. Uh, so there's a list of uh, the learning objectives that you must uh, complete. As we look at the methodology section, you can see where I highlighted the importance of what, should you, what your paper should look like. And as we go over Blackboard, I have an example copy of a research proposal paper or a proposal paper uh, that you can submit that's APA style but your paper should include uh, all the information in this section highlighted. As we move down to section four, you'll see the grading. So within this course, you have a midterm exam, a final exam, you have an APA paper, and then you have assignments, discussions, and class participation. Now to help you with your quizzes, I recommend under tests and quizzes of Blackboard that you complete all the quizzes that's there. Those quizzes will give you the required information that you will need to complete your midterm and final exams. For each one of the quizzes, for the midterm, you have uh, three opportunities to actually take the quiz, which I allowed you to have 90 minutes to complete each one of the quiz. So as you complete those quizzes, uh, you'll find that your midterm example will cover chapter one through chapter nine. And the last opportunity you will have to complete the quizzes for, for your midterm exam will be on March 25th, because you will be taking your exam on the 26th. Your midterm exam is gonna cover from chapter 10 all the way to the end of the chapter. And so you will have an opportunity to start doing your practice quiz after you complete your midterm exam. So therefore, the, the quizzes that's in the test and quizzes section for your final exam will start on May 26th and it will end on April 21st because you will be taking your uh, final exam shortly after. Be mindful also that this uh, course requires that you complete an APA paper, uh, which is due on April 22nd. You have seven discussions also in this course in which uh, you will complete discussions one through uh, week seven, and those are weekly quizzes that's gonna be available to you. As we move down on the syllabus, you'll see that uh, under section five basically lists a lot of the limestone policy policies. And since this is an online course, you would be looking at ECI. So when you click on that link, it will give you uh, all the policies and what's required under this particular course. 
when you are taking an online course, a lot of the work depends on you as an individual to ensure that you are reading the textbook, that you are thoroughly reading what's being asked of you in the course. Uh, so a lot of the work is depending on you. This will not be a course in which you will have the instructor teaching a lecture or giving you a lecture through this course. So a lot of the work is going to require uh, of you to include time management. So make sure that you uh, basically have a lot of sufficient time to uh, complete the assignments. As we move further down in the syllabus, I'm going to cover some more things through each one of the week assignments so that you will see what's exactly required of you. So as we move further down on the syllabus, we're going to go to the course outline. Uh, so you can see that week one starts, uh, unit one starts on March 5th and it's going to run all the way through March 11th. So in other words, you have an introduction post, you have also a discussion, discussion question post. So therefore, all discussion posts for the week is due on Thursday from you, and you're required to respond to two of your peers no later than Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So that means that your initial post would be done on that Thursday, and your response to your two peers will be done no later than Sunday. Also be mindful that I require that students actually support all of their response. I am not asking you for an opinion. I'm asking you to give me concrete uh, responses that's going to address the questions that's asked of you and support it with either something from your textbook or peer review article. I also require that you do the same when you're responding to your peers. So I will see references in your two posts to your peers and it also in your initial response. For you to do that will result in you receiving a lower grade uh, for uh, your discussion. Also be mindful as we get further down into the units, if you continue to do the same thing where you're not responding, then you'll find that your points, your points will be decreased uh, in the grading section. So in other words, I recommend that when we go over Blackboard and we cover uh, the Getting Started page, you will see an example of a discussion post and what it should look like to include what it should look like in responding to your peers. So in other words, I require that you support your response to, to your peers and also your response to your initial post. So just be mindful that that is something that I will be looking at and will definitely be grading based on your completion of that assignment. I recommend that you also look at how your peers are posting and if you see that they are citing and their response to their peers and also to their initial post, then you should follow suit. I will not give you credit for something that you forgot to do and you come back later on and give me a, a, a reference because you forgot to do it in the beginning. So therefore, just remember that you need to support all response to your peers. So as you look at Unit 1, you'll see that you have your discussion posts, you have your introduction. You also have a review of uh, the library resources for Blackboard. Uh, and then you have to read the discussions in Chapter 1 and 2. And that will be the end of Unit 1. So Unit 1 will be starting on March 5th and ending on March 11th. As we move on to Unit 2, you see where you're required to read Chapters 3, 4, and 5. Again, I, I, I must stress that if you're going to get anything from the chapters and be able to actually complete, complete the quizzes in the tests and quizzes section, you definitely have to read the readings. And you can see that you have quiz chapter 1 through 5. That will be your initial quiz that you would have to take of chapters 1 through 5. And as I said earlier, you have three opportunities to complete this particular quiz. And this quiz is going to open up to you uh, on March 4th. And it's going to end uh, before you're required to do your midterm exam. So just be mindful that you have three opportunities to actually complete the quiz in this section. 
All the quizzes that you complete is going to prepare you for the midterm and final exam. So you will see here in unit two also that you have a discussion post, uh, which is your initial response post is due on March 15th. And then with a response to two of your peers, you have until March 18th, which is that Sunday. So as we move down to unit three, you will find that in unit three, you have to read chapters five, I mean, six, seven, and eight, excuse me. Chapters six, seven, and eight. And then you have a, a quiz again of chapters six through eight. Remember I told you earlier that your midterm is gonna cover chapters one through nine. So if you complete the quizzes for chapter one through five, and now you have six, seven, and eight, uh, you are halfway there in completing uh, the information for your midterm exam. You also see that you have a discussion post which requires your initial post to be submitted on Thursday, March 22nd, and responding to two of your peers on Sunday, no later than March 25th at 1159. I try to provide as much information in regards to you uh, completing this particular course. Okay, as we move to Unit 4, you'll see that you have to read Chapter 9, which is on sexual orientation. And also, you have a discussion in which your initial discussion post will be on Thursday, March the 29th. And then you have no later than Sunday to respond to two of your peers by April 1st at 1159. In this section again, in Unit 4, you see Quiz Number 9. That will complete all the quizzes you need to prepare for the midterm exam. So you'll find that your quizzes will open up uh, on March 4th and it will end by March 25th. And that's because you will be taking your exam during the week of March 26th through April 1st. I will be uh, sending out information to any proctorial uh, person that's actually gonna be take, uh, reviewing your exam, uh, uh, hosting or sponsoring your exam. Just be mindful that you need to provide me with an email of who that individual will be uh, at your test site, uh, the test site which you will be doing. And if you're doing it by proctorial online, then you don't have to worry about it. Just know that your midterm exam you will have from March, 20, uh, March 26th through April 9th to actually, I mean April 1st to actually complete this. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Uh, as we move on down to unit number five, you'll see that in unit five, you have chapters 10, 11, and 12. And of course you have your discussion response. And then you have your quiz, chapter quiz 10 through 12. Now also be mindful that these quizzes are not going to be a graded quiz that's going to be incorporated under quizzes for you. This will be a part of your 25% uh, 20, uh, of your final grade under the discussions, quizzes, and assignments. So just be mindful, all quizzes is going to be uh, added to that area along with your uh, discussion posts. Unit 6, again, you see you have uh, quizzes again. You also have a discussion post, and you have your reading. Okay, you'll see under Unit 7, your final paper is due. Again, I told you that you, you will see a copy of that on the Getting Started, an example of a, a paper on the Getting Started uh, page of your course, which will give you an idea of what your paper should look like when you're writing in APA format. You also have a discussion post that you have to respond to uh, as you are doing that uh, for the discussion section. So just be mindful that you have to do that. Again, I recommend that you uh, support all your response uh, to your peers and your initial post, post by something from the textbook or a peer review article. I, I really like students to actually uh, support what they're saying to me by something from the textbook or something from a peer review article in, in relations to the subject matter rather than giving me just your opinion, which is not based sometimes on factual uh, information. It's just what you think or uh, how you feel. 
And so if you feel that way, then I want you to support it with something to tell me this is why I feel that way. Okay, as you look at Unit 8, you'll see your final exam, and that's going to be done from April 22nd through uh, April 27th. So therefore, you have your proctorial you can take within that, that window. Just be mindful that you have to take it during that time frame. If you have any questions, again, I, I recommend that you call me by the contact number that I gave you uh, earlier. As we move down the syllabus, you'll see that you have the goals of limestone. This is some reading that you know you basically want to do uh, because uh, the social work program is an accredited program and it requires you to actually uh, complete some requirements. And as we go over uh, Blackboard, you will see some of the things that's required of you. But make sure that you actually read the syllabus in detail. And if you have any questions, uh, from your reading of the syllabus, then I recommend that you either call me or email me and we can discuss further. So I'm going to at this point in this video and I will start another video that discusses Blackboard and how the assignments are laid out for you. I hope that you have a successful uh, learning experience in this particular course. Just be mindful that time management is crucial. I will be checking uh, daily uh, for your submissions, and you should do the same. I recommend that you do it more than one time out of the day. I recommend that you do it at least three times because sometimes I post uh, additional information that may help you with uh, an assignment or what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and end this particular video and start the next video.